Today we are going to do 2013 GCEO level physics paper as we always start off with two steps PE preparation and execution. So let's do the prep preparing now. Now the question here says in this experiment you will investigate how the speed of a water wave changes as the depth of the water is altered. To do this you will use the apparatus as shown in figure 1.1. This is the tray that you are given. There will be water placed inside and this is the length L from here to here. Measure the length of the tray L and record this value in mm. So I'm going to use this meter rule. Let me place the water in front. Length of L is from this portion of the tray all the way down to the, the end of the tray here. So estimated length is about 18.5 but they say you're going to measure and record the value in mm so it's 185 mm. Practice. B says with the tray flat on the bench carefully pour water into it so that the depth D is 10 mm. Use the mark stick provided. This is the mark stick provided here and they have already marked it by 10 mm, 20, 30, 40 to 50 mm. So now I'm going to pour water inside, put it here, and making sure that it will reach 10 mm. This is 10 mm. It goes on to say, raise one side of A to about 15 to 20 mm as shown in figure 1.2 and let it drop back to the bench. 10 to 15 to 20 mm is about from here. Let me use this. It's about 1 to 2 cm. So if I use the mark stick, that will be easier. So let me use this. Raise up 1 to 2 cm and over this part, release it. You will see that the water wave move from left to right and back again. It says that you should see the, a wave move forward and backward across the surface of the water several times as shown in figure 1.3. And it also shows how do you measure the crest. Now, if you see from this view, you can see very clearly, if I lift this up again, the wave from travel from left to right, left to right, left to right. So we will need to measure the time taken for a wave crest to make three cycles. One cycle consists of a wave crest tra traveling from side A across to B and back to A again. You should start timing when side A of the tray drops and stop timing when the wave returns to side A of the tray for the third time. You may find it easier to, wave the, to view the wave crest from the side as shown in figure 1.3. Repeat this process several times until you are confident that you know what to do. Only then should you start to record your measurement. So when we move this upward, you can see how the wave moves. Of course, the question says that we're supposed to watch it at the side, but I feel that it's easier when you look it up, when you're looking at it on the top view, because you can see clearly how the wave front move from left, from this side, from A to B and back to A again. Experiment one shows here says that using the procedure you practice in part B for the depth of 10 mm, measure a time taken for a wave crest to complete three cycles. Record this time T1 to the nearest 0.01 second in table 1.1. So let's come to table 1.1. Here I have to remind myself that reading taken should be close to 0.01 seconds. So all this is 0.01 seconds and 0.01 second average timing should also be 0.01 second. Experiment 2.4 here says 2 to 5 here says, repeat the procedure described, record all the timing 1, 2, T1, T2 and T3 to the nearest 0.01 second. And record each step. For each step, record timing 
record T1, T2 and T3 to the nearest 0.01 seconds. This portion here, the average time TA giving your answer to the nearest 0.01 seconds. Average speed of the wave C using the formula below where L is the length measured in part A, which is this. Giving your answer to the nearest mm per second. So for this answer here, there should be no decimal place. Square root of the depth, square root D for each depth here, giving your answer to two decimal place, 2dp.